What's up, everybody? Joseph R. Wheeler III, artist, founder, and president of the Honest Kind Foundation. What's happening? I wanted to talk to y'all today about some more relationship goals in the art life. What I'm about to say is not only should be looked at as more profound coming from a visual artist, a professional visual artist, with a keen sense of what is commonly found to be aesthetic, historically found to be aesthetic, culturally in variations of what people like, we all like beauty, okay? So today's topic is about how important our looks What's up? How y'all doing? Hi. Hey. Oh. Okay, but I'm not going to say pineapple to you because you look kind of good. <laughs> okay. I'm not <laughs> to someone who has been married, divorced, been dating for years, has been across the world for love, okay? Dated ladies of different ethnicities, all right? Different phenotypes, different body types, different, I mean, literally, I have types. People tell me, I got a type, I got a type. I have types on purpose. I really do. I just, I like all types of ladies. So I hear people debate it all the time whether or not looks and stuff matter. And I hear women say mostly, mostly women, because men, most men don't lie to themselves about that. There are those amongst us that will say that stuff, that will sit there and say, well, you know, looks don't really matter that much. No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, I'm not saying it's impossible to find a dude who doesn't care about looks, right? Uh, the less attractive someone thinks they are to themselves, the less concerned they might be about looks because they feel like, well, hell, I ain't, I'm not everybody's cup of coffee, so why should I be too picky? Because I know I'm lucky if I get anything. So, I, you know, you, you hear that from that type. And then you'll sometimes hear it from people who may know they're attractive and have been found to be attractive by the masses, but it doesn't matter because they've been through so much hell that they will still deal with somebody who's quote unquote less attractive than what most people would expect them to deal with. Now, I lean more towards that. I know I'm a handsome gentleman. I'm not going to take no points away from myself that I've been given. The ones I give myself when I look in the mirror and the ones I've given and been received time and time again by various ladies of every age, of every ethnicity. A lot of women find me to be handsome. Now, oh, you want me to, hold on. You must be new to the show. Hold on, let me. Hey, how y'all doing? So, does that help? To help prove my point okay anyway how you doing ladies what's up yeah i'm still i'm single so um <laughs> so check it when people talk from these different perspectives it always cracks me up when women in particular uh are in denial about how much looks do matter now i was gonna say from the perspective of a guy who's been told he's handsome who's also dealt with i've dealt with ladies who match what most people expect me to date. Like, I've literally had women tell me, I didn't think you would pick me when I've been on a dating app or just met them in everyday life and started talking to them. And later on, after we get cool, then they, you know, they don't, they don't want to admit it in the beginning, but they admit it later. They say, you know, I didn't think, I was surprised you even was liking me like that. I was like, why? They're like, well, you know, you just seem like the type who would only date models. And I mean, you know, you're in the acting thing and all that. And, you're in great shape for your age. I just thought you would be with somebody more like, you know, about all that. Cause I know, I mean, I'm working on myself. Like I, like if I get the girl who's a little chunky or, you know, may not think her face is so amazing, uh, might feel like she's under the bar, so to speak. And I say, well, you know, and you know, I'm in my mind thinking, well, yeah, I'm glad you know you're not, you know, necessarily uh, the one that everybody does like this when they walk in the room. But don't doubt yourself and think that people won't still say, oh, damn, she's kind of cute. She's real cute, you know? And they might know that, and that might be just enough to why they still think, well, I just think you would be with the stunner. And I'm like, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. But guess what? I done dealt with some stunners. And some of them crazy as hell. Because <laughs> they've been overstunned, okay? Everybody done, done told them they such a stunner, it done went to their head and made them crazy as hell. Right? This is why a lot of folks say, you know, crazy. the prettier they are, the crazier they are. Some dudes will say that. There's little phrases that guys say amongst each other and that are known because it ain't no secret no more. But I get it. I get it because it's a lot of pressure being the it girl, so to speak. So I think that mess that does mess up a lot of beautiful women in the head. Now, 
there are exceptions to the rule where you have somebody who's, who may have that look and everything, but depending on the cultural situation, family situation, uh, community situation she grew up in, it didn't go to her head or she wasn't, it wasn't allowed. Like her parents like, I don't care how cute you are, you're gonna still have to do some work. Or I don't care how cute you are, your pretty privilege ain't gonna get you everything you want. No, I'm not buying that toy just cause you're cute. No, I'm not buying this just cause you're beautiful. No, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like it, they kept it in perspective. That's very healthy. Every woman who's fine generally don't get that. Most of them, when they, as soon as they've been declared, they go from, you know, cutest little girls to just, oh, she's sexy, she's pretty as a grown woman, and then, oh, Lord, it's over. Because you've been getting it all your life. When you was little, you couldn't do nothing without being said cute. Then you get older, and now you're the most gorgeous thing, so everybody's supposed to treat you like royalty. Yeah, but how do you treat other people? You know what I'm saying? And are you a, are you a, a beautiful, wonderful, ethical queen, or are you a menace? to society, right? So for guys who've dealt with uh, the latter, sometimes knowing our worth, we might still take it, take the bar down on the look, so to speak, for whatever we like, or what we know is quote unquote, the hottest look, and still deal with somebody who ain't all of those category, all those checkoff boxes. She might not have the, the tiny waist, the big old breast, the big booty, she ain't gotta have all that. She just, she got what she got and it's enough for me. You know, I done dealt with petite ladies that were absolute darlings. Absolute darlings. Ain't barely had nobody. You know what I'm saying? But it was a woman. She was grown. She a little tiny old thing, but she just as sweet. And in her own way, she fine and wonderful. And, but you know, you do get in your head, you think to yourself, uh, you know, does she know how wonderful she is? And a lot of times I found with those types, those be the ones that self-doubt. They wonder why you're even dealing with them. So that puts a lot of that puts a lot of pressure on a man to be like, once we done accepted you, ladies, once a man has accepted you, accept that he's accepted you. And be what he is making you in his head. Cause he he may know, like I said, you ain't that every checkoff list that he may have imagined himself being with if he's starting to feel you to the point of considering a relationship. A long term as y'all all want that LTR if he's considering you that way you can't be in the way of that and if he's also telling you because this is something else I've come about with ladies like that they tend not to care so much about their look so they be anti makeup now I'm not, I'm not big on makeup but I'm saying absolutely no makeup is like come on baby just put a little eye on and put a little lip on that's all I need your skin is great you ain't got I don't never like the cake face I don't want to kiss powder and foundation and all that stuff i don't need all that so if you that kind of woman i said that's a turn on that's a plus that's reading real good on your resume but if you also don't want to do nothing or you don't even embellish at all like you know put a little jewelry on put some you know if you can't wear earrings put your earrings on put your, little things that like add to your femininity and make it more and more sexy you do need it every woman knows this the, the finest of women do this in maximum they, it overblows what they got. They just, God dang, good trust. Sometimes they do too damn much, okay? But if you're on the, on the other end of the spectrum, it's okay to embellish, you need to embellish. And when your man tells you to embellish, don't be giving him no attitude about, I'm not really that type, I don't really, yeah, 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 I know, baby. And most of the time, we ain't gotta do all that. But when we go out, I wanna be proud of what's on my arm. You gotta shine in a way that, you're not competing, but in a way you always are. And we know this, it's me and we know this. So, you know, if you if you know you're that lady who tells yourself, like, mind you, I don't like putting people on number scales. Like, are you a 10, are you a nine, an eight? Or, I don't like doing that. But psychologically, in a world that does do that, we all know we have our own personal number based on what is around us. Now, most women have an unrealistic number, as we can see in this modern reality with all the makeup, hair, lashes, everything else that folk embellish themselves with. Let them get what they think is good at putting that stuff on. And uh, you can get all kind of lost realities on how fine and how perfect and how wonderful they think they are, which is, is amazing. And this, I'm saying for ladies who don't feel like they are that, just be real with yourself. Like if you're in a relationship with a guy and he's trying to upgrade you, upgrade you. You know, it's funny how Beyonce can make a song about upgrade a man. We need, we need a real dude. We need somebody like, like you know, a genuine or, or Tyrese or 
or anybody like that, one of them real crooners, one of them real R&B singers to make a, the equivalent of upgrade. But for dudes trying to tell a woman, let me upgrade you, baby. Like, not like I'm gonna really tell you exactly how to dress, not because I mean, that's what she did. She's like, I'm gonna give you your purple labels. I'm gonna put this on you. I'm gonna get you. Yeah, that's what women do. But from the male perspective, maybe not, I'm gonna literally dress you in every way and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I'm gonna give you some suggestions. And if you take them, guess what? I'm already attracted to you. Cause this is where women get confused. They think, oh, if he gotta do all that, then he must not really like me at all. Is that what we say when y'all tell us y'all want us to change something? Baby, wear a suit sometimes. Baby, don't wear your, your Jordans every day. Put on a pair of hard bottoms sometimes. Any real man gonna take that advice and smile and grin from ear to ear when he see the result of how everybody starts checking him out like he Mr. Smooth and his woman look at him like, didn't I tell you? You know, and she just want her credit for, I'm the one who upgraded you. It's like, it's that kind of thing, you know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. So the same thing can apply from the dude perspective when the guy does it. But you gotta be open to it. And from my perspective, it, it, one of the main things is gonna be just get, you gotta get rid of it, gotta deal with it, gotta deal with it. If you are less fit than your man as a woman, and a lot of women, I find this to be so common, and in, this, in, the, in the black community especially, uh, and this and it goes both ways because there'll be slimmer dudes that like big women. That that can be a thing. I got a homeboy. He love him some big girls. I'm like, God dang, boy. I, mean, I can deal with a big girl, but not. I'm gonna be honest. You hear what I, how I said it? Deal with because I mean, it's not my preference. Curvy, cool. But even with curvy, you're a project to be improved. I'm just being real. From day one, and I let them know. I say, hey, uh, how's your fitness? Because here's the reality. I like a job where I have to be physical. You see what I'm doing. I'm doing courier work right now. I have to get in and out of the car, moving packages, different size packages, different weights. I'm getting. I'm in the gym right now. This is the gym, okay? Some days it's really the gym. Like yesterday, what? I went up and down some stairs with them cases of water. I did some doggone, I got some TVs back here today. I got, I got all kind of stuff that I be doing day to day. So I'm saying when you do those types of things, and you see the results for yourself. In addition to, I get my regular walks and I do my push-ups, and I got my 30-pound dumbbells. I don't really be hitting no gym. This is the gym. I'm not. I don't have no gym membership. This. I used to have all that. I've done that at one stage in my life. I don't look much different. Matter of fact, I might look better now than I did then. Okay. So you just gotta figure out what works for you. Everybody's body is different. I'm not even saying what I'm doing will work perfect for everybody, especially for a woman. But I am saying if she wanna be with me. She gonna have to be physically active. Like I love to hike and I love to fish. I always tell the lady, I say, you may not like the outdoors, but you need to, it would be, it would behoove, you know, got my word, I love it. It would behoove you to go with me sometime. You need to go with me sometime. Go go hike at least. You may not like the fishing part, but go, go hike with me. You know what I'm saying? And if she's against that completely, like just ain't gonna go, but would rather lay around on a couch all day and look at some TV or just, all I wanna do is cuddle and just go to work, come home, cook for you and cuddle and it, nah. Because all you're going to do is become a, a fat, pretty cat over time. You're going to be pretty as hell forever because I ain't going to get with nobody who don't look good enough in the face. But you're going to get on my nerves and I'm be like, look at this little cute butterball on the couch. Yeah, that's cute on an animal as a pet. But as my woman, that ain't cute. I'm sorry. For me. For me. Just being real. So yeah, y'all. That just, um, you know, that don't work for me. I'm just being honest. This whole video is to be very honest from a personal perspective. Views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Honest Cons affiliates, associates, sponsors, etc. There it is. Okay, so, um, <laughs> no, not necessarily. Okay, so, um, you know, but I know that what I'm seeing is shared by a, a great percentage of men who agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're not the guy who I could be smaller than my woman in, in weight and, and, uh, and width <laughs> and uh, and that's okay or they prefer that they like big women and they like being the little guy between a big old fluffy ball you know what I mean like yeah it's like yo if that's what you like fine I get it I ain't gonna say I don't understand the reason why too sometimes because one thing I experienced with uh, the, 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 the thickest lady I ever dated okay and she was beautiful. I mean, pretty as I don't know what the fact. I never get her telling me, this is not my normal size. This one I knew we were gonna get along just fine. 
She was like, baby, I'm trying to get back to what I was. She showed me a picture of what she was. I said, ooh, Lord. All that you find. My homie speak on me. She got back for days. Put a week on How long can we stay friends? We just laugh about it. Like, like if you get back to that, damn, I don't know. We, 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 we were purposefully doing a true, keyword, true friends with benefits. You know what I'm saying? Like, she told me. She understood, respected that I wasn't trying to get into you know, marriage or nothing like that. No time soon. I'm out here on my grind. I'm all about this art life. I'm about exploring. I want to travel. I want to do a lot of things that I just don't want to be tied all the way down. I, said, I don't mind being regular with somebody. I really don't. I, li I prefer that. I like, and this is still my same speech to this day. This has been years ago. Uh, but I admit it's starting to change as I get older. Now I'm starting to feel like, well, I don't know. These, these streets too rough. Maybe I just do need just go on and sell down. It make you feel like giving up. Kind of like you, you ain't really selling. You just giving them. <laughs> y'all win, all right? Shit. Since you ain't none of y'all gonna be what I need, just I'll just take whatever come along. No, see, that's not. That's a whole nother video about not settling. But anyway, we're gonna focus here. So, you know, she was a little on the, on, the, on the thick side, but not sloppy fat whatsoever. She was an athletic lady who had just stopped doing her thing because of depression at one point. I said, I understand, I know how that feels because we were talking about we had both been through a divorce. I said, that'll put you in some depression, I get it. And as she was coming up out of that hole, she was getting her body together. She was doing all kinds of physical activities, you know, sports type stuff. And, and it was, I saw in the time that I was with her, it was, it was hard to come off, but it was coming off slow but sure. But then I never forget eating with her one time. She cooked for me. I said, okay, I see why this is hard to come off because she loved pasta and stuff. Yeah. That, yo, that pasta, <laughs> all that bread, and I love bread, y'all, because that's all pasta is, is wheat. It's still the, the main ingredient in pasta is wheat, okay? I'm not telling you not to eat it, but I'm saying for my, for my particular uh, diet that I have to be on, I can't eat an abundance of wheat. We all know that certain things put pounds on you. And I like some of the things that most ladies like. like most ladies be loving sweets. Not all, but a lot of them like little sweets. I like cookies. I like uh, pies. I don't like cake as much. And I think that's what saves me because cake is probably the most fattening. And most folks who love sweets in general, they love them some candy and some cake. You know, They're like cookies is just an appetizer. When we're gonna, we're gonna eat the cookies first, and then we're gonna get to the cake and just rah, take the whole cake out. God damn! No wonder why you big as hell. Like, come on, you gotta stop, y'all. You gotta stop. You gotta put brakes on yourself. You gotta get some discipline, okay? So the other thing about looks is, I mean, hey, uh, people like to change their style, their hair. Their, you know, ladies especially love to change their look. Nothing wrong with that, but just know that you should, if you're in a relationship, if you want to be in a successful long-term relationship, you should have an honest conversation with each other when you first meet about what you liked about each other and be honest. It's so hard for people to be freaking honest. But let me tell you something about those who don't want to deal with honesty. It'll come back and bite you in the ass every time. Because if you stuck in something, okay, the more bills and everything y'all share, the more responsibilities, the more family intertwinings and everything going on, you're gonna feel trapped in a reality of being somebody that you are not. You're gonna start to feel like, man, what, whatever happened to me? I'm just doing everything for this, what I think this other person wants and blah, 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 blah. Y'all ain't had no honest conversation with each other to know what you like about each other, what you really liked about each other when you first met. Like, what was the initial attraction? And now, if it was one of them situations where, you know, a lot of women might fall prey to this, well, I thought I could improve you and change you and, you know, damn, change it. Like, there's, there's physical, you know, stuff like the way somebody dress, maybe. But even then, if a dude likes sportswear, he gonna always like sportswear. I'm a dude who likes sportswear and I like suits. But if you know you prefer seeing a man in a suit most of the time, and seeing him in a suit is not just an enhanced, wonderful thing to you know have ever so often like if he ain't got the corporate job where he gotta wear suits or something you're gonna be unsatisfied with the way he looks every day you need to be honest about that that's not pressure to put on the person you know and if he's like that man you know maybe he like that i like to see my women in heels all the time and whether it be the business style or the casual style you know you gotta always be in some heels and i don't care if it mess up your feet just keep them lotion or whatever you know if he owns some stuff like that or you know, or, or he's, he's into 
uh, your toes looking a certain way. You got to keep that pedicure. And you know that's an expense. And don't try and pass it off on him. It should be something. To, what I'm saying is, if it's not something you already like, then you need to be honest with him about that. Like, guess what? I'm not that girl at all. Like, I'm not even going to do that for you. Like, if it's in you to do it, like I said, using the example of me being into sporty gear and stuff. Um, sportswear, and I'm not even like the super sports dude. Like, I'm such a unicorn about my stuff. Like, I'm into sci-fi and fantasy and things. Um, anime is cool, but I'm not into anime like these young 20s and 30s and teens folks are. Okay, the anime I grew up on is a whole nother era of anime. So I'm not gonna always have you, you come in the room and if you don't wanna hear Japanese language and see subtitles on the screen, yeah, I might do that every now and then, but you ain't gotta worry about it being over the top. But I have done it, so if I came back to it, don't be surprised. You get what I'm saying? Like, we all come in phases, like, yeah, I used to be into it real heavy, then I came back to something. Else. Like, fishing ain't going nowhere. As long as I can hold a pole, I'm going fishing. You don't like the idea of somebody acquiring their own food and and challenging themselves to the elements and learning the ways of nature to be able to acquire an animal in the way of harvesting a creature or just for recreation and, and you know, catch and release. And all. If you got a problem with that, we couldn't be together. You know, it's like that kind of stuff got to be said up front. You don't reveal that later on, months later, years into the relationship or ignore it when it's said early in the relationship and pretend like that's going to suddenly become more attractive to you when you hated it from day one you know they're like oh i don't even like how he dress when he wears his clothes for going fish i can't stand it i can't stand how he look well then let's leave this alone because <laughs> i'm gonna be that dude in addition to the damn she cute see what i'm saying <laughs> Woo! lord have mercy that don't happen too often where i'm rolling mm -hmm. she was pretty boy if i wasn't at work i might have to park the car and go jogging she was jogging I'd be, hey how you doing <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Woo. Wow. Wow. That threw my whole man. Yeah. Okay. See what I'm saying? That kind of beauty. Beauty that make me want to stop working. Hell with these damn packages. <laughs> that's that's the kind of woman I need. I don't as far as a long-term relationship. You gotta be able to make me do that. Ain't no use in me. Now, does that mean I couldn't date a woman who just I might pass by in the car now and be like, oh, she's cute. Yeah. And I could be intimate and everything, but I'm not even going to lie to myself in terms of something ongoing and strong and meant to be. And I'm going to do everything I can to keep the flame. I'm going to keep dousing it with alcohol and, and, and gasoline and everything. <laughs> what? I'm throwing coals on it and I'm trying to keep the fire going. That's like what just ran past just a minute ago here. That's, God, man, yeah. You know? And they're everywhere. There's, there's, that's the other thing you start realizing. Um, yeah, I'm going to go on this tangent. I thought to myself, do I want to go on this tangent? I do want to go on this tangent. That's the th one of those things that you realize when you start traveling is that, you know, a lot of this stuff I'm even talking about is a result of some cultural stuff in America where if women no matter how sloppy they allow their bodies to get. Skin regimen ain't about nothing. They're not healthy. They're not really healthy. So that's why they, it's not even about you're not physically beautiful. You're not taking care of the beauty that the universe gave you. So any man that is taking care of himself to any degree, if, he do, if his regimen is better than yours and he knows it, okay, he's not going to settle for the average looking just okay when it comes to something long term. He will try to work with that woman just like a woman will try to work with a man to improve him if she'll listen. If she's one of them, man, a man ain't gonna tell me nothing. I'm here to tell him. I'll shape him and he ain't about to shape me. Well then, we just, never mind. Just leave it alone. Just, just go on now. Go on. You ain't mature enough, you ain't ready. You're not realistic enough. But if she's willing to adjust herself and I'm speaking from experience like I literally had women in my life that cute as could be weren't my my epitome of like check off everything on my list of for sale you know the idea of an ultimate woman and it's almost impossible for me because once you check it off on some basic stuff like okay uh this size waist this size br breast this size butt or type of butt or whatever is perfect or whatever 
it, it always changes because I'll see something I've never seen before in a different ethnicity or a specific gene pool and be like, be like, man, I didn't know they made people like that. I didn't know that was a factory <laughs> that put out people that look like that. Good gosh, look at her. You know, it's always, there's always another, right? But one thing about that new and that other is that no matter how different, it's always familiar enough for me to be honest and say, but is this enough that if I get to talking with this person and I don't like their energy mentally, am I going to tolerate it just because they so fine to me? Nope. Nope. I don't care. I don't give a damn who it is, what they look like. I don't care what they got going. I admit it's harder. I'm going to say something. It's harder. That pretty privilege is real. It's harder when you're dealing with them ones that you know turn your head because you, you know, they become, it's a, hey, it is a, you know, they say the trophy wife and all that kind of stuff, the trophy girl. There is a thing. There is such a thing. There is like a, man, you truly are a prize to be around, to be able to say, that's my lady. Yeah, you know, that make a man proud. It's real stuff. Let us continue. So, another thing with a lot of women, I think, uh, about that unwillingness to change when they want something long-term. Mind you, I can't stress enough that this mostly applies to long-term relationship, LTR, you know, all them damn acronyms y'all love to put up on dating apps. I ain't looking for no kind of, no kind of casual, no friends with benefits, nothing like that whatsoever at all. No, no strings attached. You understand me? I'm looking for the LTR. LT to the mother oh, that's what, that's what these women be out here saying. All over the world. All over the world. I'm talking about all over the world. No matter where you look. Asia, Africa, the, the Middle East, South America, Mexico. I ain't trying to do no hookups, no kind of hookup. Even when they can't even write it out, can barely say English. None, none the hookup. No, to the hookup the up. I mean, it's just... It'd be all of me. I think I'm making bad jokes, but they're real. I mean, like, I've literally seen what, I'm, what I just said. I've seen it written. I've seen it written. I'm not making it up. I'm not trying to just be funny. I'm telling you, it's real. So, um, <laughs> it's real. So, they, they say they about that life, right? Look, ladies, certain things go with certain things. Oil and water don't mix, right? Same rules apply with relationships. You can't say you want an LTR, long-term relationship, and you're not willing to do whatever it takes to keep that person in your life. Now, I'm quick to say, we are each responsible for our own happiness. That's an absolute fact that is a given, it ain't going nowhere. You're responsible for your own happiness. And we are all had a right to change and evolve and do whatever makes us happy at different stages in life. Which is another reason why you got to know yourself well enough to know yourself that you know if you're going to change. You're not going to change so much that you're going to get away from what attracted that person in the first place if they told you with that answer. Yeah, you know, everything about you as it is right now is just absolutely amazing. Well, guess what? I'm going to change, baby. How, good, how much could you deal with the change? If the honest answer is, the realistic answer is, oh, I can deal with the change, but, you know, I admit... I would hate if this change or that change or this change is too much. I don't know how I would do it. I don't know. Them, them I don't knows are the dangerous. That's danger zones. Why? Because those I don't knows are the things that are going to be, oh, I figured out what I didn't know 10, 20 years from now, five years from now. And guess what? I don't like it. Now that I'm dealing with it, I don't like it. So let me give you a little silly example of something I saw one time with a friend. And I haven't seen this person in eons. This is ancient history from just a coworker at a job. I, I had a retail job one time. And there was a lady who didn't work in my department. But so like, I would only see her when I had to go check on, you know, the, the scan bar for a certain item or something in the store or whatever. And she was the cutest little thing. Very pretty lady. She was married. I'll never forget the first day I met her. It was like we both just kind of like took a moment because we knew, uh-oh. I like the way you look and you like the way I look. Uh-oh. And I was married at the time, so I was really like, uh-oh, right? Because I'm like, I ain't, mm -mm, no, no. You know, I ain't playing them games. And she was the same way because she was married. Now, mind you, I'm divorced, been divorced for years now. But back then, 
Uh, and I remember, like, you know, we would have the most fun little conversations. So we had energy. But we quickly realized, let's keep this as friendly as possible and professional and respectful because we understand that we got this little googly eye that we get every now and then when we see each other. Like, we, we're a little too happy to see each other when we see each other at work. Because it's like, ooh, my friend is here. It's like, yeah, hey, friend. <laughs> Let me not have to go in the office too many times a day looking at her little pretty self. And she don't want me to come around too much. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Just respect. Simple. Fellas, respect. Ladies, respect. So, I never get one day she was looking, you know, she always had a smile. She always was very happy and friendly. One day she was looking outside post. I was like, hey, uh, you know, I come to check on something. I needed to scan or something. And, she doing that and while she on the computer, she's looking all mean. And I was like, what, you all right? You doing all right? She's like, I'm all right. I'm just, just, me and my husband had an argument and I'm just, I'm just in my feelings about it, whatever. And I said, like, oh, okay. Well, you know, that happens, I understand. You know how it is, right? And it was like, uh oh, she just want to let it out. She need a sounding board and she remembered that I was married too. You know how it is when you're married and da 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 And I'm just listening like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, oh yeah. <laughs> just, just listen, don't say nothing. That's, that's always the rule. We, <laughs> as a friend, as the husband, just listen, all right? Just hear it out, then give your thoughts, right? So I'm letting her get it out. And and she was quick about it. And the funniest thing is she said, because I can't remember what the hell she said they were arguing about. It was something stupid, I know. And she said, the only thing that gets on my nerves is every time he's mad at me, he goes and he shaved. He has a mustache. He knows I like his mustache. I don't like to see him without facial hair. And he shaved it low. He shaved it almost off. I said, oh, damn. He playing games. He playing real games. But you knowing that's something you like. He's like, you know, that just pissed me off. I can't stand when he does that. I don't want to see that. I can't stand the way his face looks like that. It's, he's still my, you know, she was talking about, I like how he looks. He's still always him. But I can't stand when he has that. I can't see it. I was like, oh, wow. She's all in it. She all in it, right? So I'm just laughing, thinking to myself. This is a perfect example. You know, I think I told her, like, you, you know he gonna grow it back or whatever. But like, okay, in later years, I thought about that as I grew older and wiser. And mind you, I was young then, she was young. I guess we were both in our 20s, if you will. So, you know, <laughs> But put yourself in the 30s and 40s still playing them kind of games. Let me tell y'all something, man. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's like you're leaving the door open for nonsense. If you got a friendly, comely spouse or friend, you know, whatever, and y'all get into this, you know, disagreement or whatever, you know that's one of their main things. It's, it's a boundary. It's one of the things. Like, look, keep some facial hair on your face. That's what I think is most attractive about you because they've seen you the other way and they didn't like it. It's a turnoff. Now you're messing with the sexual chemistry. You mess with the sexual chemistry. There's nothing more important. We're gonna make a whole another video about how important sex is, but let me tell y'all something. Stop taking it for granted. It's the flame, it's the glue, it's the physical representation of the bond you have mentally. Yes, the mental and all that absolutely gotta be there. Absolutely gotta be there. But once that's a step, you're in a freaking marriage. That's obviously there. Now, the rest of your life, the job is to keep the flame alive. You know you liked each other enough to put these rings on each other's finger and say, I do in front of all your family and everybody, if that's how y'all did it, whatever. But I'm saying if the state and everybody else involved or whatever your arrangement is, okay? I don't, you know, everybody doing it different ways these days. I'm just saying. You can't play games with the stuff that makes you attractive. Looks do matter. If that woman had, you know, she ain't gonna worry about me. Like I said, I'm the responsible dude. I ain't trying, I wasn't trying to mess up nothing. And I wasn't happy at that time, okay? But I still wasn't trying to mess up nothing. I'm still, they bring my ass home and deal with whatever I got to deal with until I wasn't dealing with that no more because I had to go, right? But I'm saying, if you know you are in a situation, because it only gets more complicated. I think they had a kid too, you know what I'm saying, if I remember right. You get somebody else who got kids too. And all, like, the more y'all got in common, Get, get the right one, not not somebody who ain't got who got ethics like me. Get somebody who ain't got no ethics to be the nice co-worker to a woman like that. And he come around. This wasn't even in the beard era, y'all. This is far enough back where, you know I mean? Beards come and go in terms of style. They're always forever, but I'm saying when it became a thing, like women for the last, what, damn near 20 years now, I've been telling, oh, beards, beard, oh, I love a beard. And some women, I don't like beards, you know. There, there are those rare exceptions. I can't stand all this beard. I hate it. I hate it. Right, gotcha. But for those who love it, imagine the dude with the beard at work 
and he's fit and he looks like, let's say he looked like the dream dude that she always wanted as the coworker. And the husband looks like what she could get, but he's got the greatest personality. You know, because women a lot of these say it's just it's personality matters so much more than looks. It matters, but don't ever think that the looks don't matter. Because if Mr. Beard had been at the job and was trying to push her up on her and didn't give a damn about the husband, but just trying to get in the draws, he probably would have got it eventually. Because if this fool, if his hair take too damn long to grow back at home, and she going to work looking at the dude who looks like every sexual fantasy she's ever had, plus the beard, it's just a matter of time between one of them lunch breaks that they took together gonna end up not coming back to work because they in the hotel somewhere. I ain't trying to wish it on nobody. I'm just saying it can be this kind of ugly out here in this crazy world that y'all done created. It ain't the world I want to be in, but it's the one a lot of y'all done created. So, with all that said, take it how you want it. Say what you thought in the comments. It's all good. Just be respectful. I'm here to edutain. It's for entertainment and education. If you get both out of it, you, you understood my point. So I'm saying the same thing can apply with women and them, you know, and, and how we feel about them and how we ask them to just do certain things and keep certain things in place. When you decide to get married, let me tell you something. All the ladies who want to be the big crop, I want to cut my hair. I want to change up my hair. If your man tells you when he met you, your hair is definitely one of the things that attract you. If he says it's not that big a deal, ask him if he's telling the freaking truth, first of all. And, and are you the kind of woman who allows him to tell the truth. Because if he's scared to tell you the truth because he don't want to hear your mouth, he just, you know, he may not be scared, he just don't want to hear your freaking mouth going off about how hair is trivial and how could you judge me on my hair? You know I like to change my hair. Uh, bump all that. If he's telling you, baby, I like it like this. And I also really like it like this, this, and this. But if that list is less than five and you're trying to do 10 other things, you better get all that about your system before you start talking about put a ring on it. Seriously, like literally, if hair is that important to you, get all of that out your system before you get married because one bad hairdo could be one of the worst years of your life for that man getting tired of looking at you on top of your crazy mouth. <laughs> you know, and all this stuff goes both ways. Hey, everybody, might I add too that as an actor that's been in the biz for over 11 years, as an actor, you have to change your look. I have always picked roles that did not require me to shave off my facial hair because I know women prefer me to have hair on my face. I would not take a job to make sure I kept good women in my life. That's the kind of dedication you gotta have to understand how much looks matter. You know, back to the fellas and what they gotta work on. Like, fellas, you can't be, I get so tired of seeing dudes online on some of these YouTube pages and stuff. Man, they looking like a butterball turkey with a beard or a mustache. They looking like they tried to go out for the football team and didn't make it. Never even played and got fat later. No, they they didn't make it onto the football team. And they just said, well, bump it. This is my reason for getting fat. I couldn't play ball and that's all I was gonna try and do to make it. You know, I ain't make it there. So bump it, man. Shoot, I, just, I like food, you know what I'm saying? I, I like to eat. <laughs> okay, and they end up big as hell drinking all the damn time, so that's killing your metabolism, so you sure enough get big. And then they wanna get the skinniest women to show them so much love. It's like, yo, man. And then when the women don't, ain't feeling that, <laughs> they all in their feelings and they mad, and then, and then the worst, you know, man. And I'm a, as a guy who, like I say, I ain't no passport bro. I'm the man with a passport who loves to travel. There's a difference. I'm a man with a passport who loves to travel, period. That, that, that ain't no hashtag. You want to write that sentence, write it out after the little number sign. You know, hashtag sign, you know, same thing. You know. Whatever you want to do with that. But I'm not going, you know, I'm not going to be in that little group. But I can't, I noticed the way that group is growing. And there's some people who are in that group whose channels I do like. Because they, I think they just on a bandwagon trying to get numbers. But. They ain't really even real passport bros. Not for the way the show enough ones be talking. The show enough ones be on some real, like, defined margins of what we say and do. And the funniest ones for me are the ones, like I say, that, man, they always talking about how they gonna get the finest women. And you'll see sometimes they will have some, some pretty ladies in Asia and these Latin countries and 
they be some straight dimes, you know, as they say, dime, dime pieces. Yeah, yeah. gorgeous, beautiful. But <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I am starting to, I'm not on the band, I'm damn sure I'm not on the other bandwagon either. I'm not either, I'm not on nobody's bandwagon. I'm not on anybody's team or perspective on it, per se, with this argument between the passport bros and the angry women back home, especially with black men mad at black men, black women mad at black men because they're traveling and meeting women of other ethnicities and having relationships, okay? Or just having relations, <laughs> okay? I ain't got no problem with nothing. It, 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 grown folk do what grown folk need to do. That is beautiful, right? What I got a problem with, though, is when, like I say, they they getting these quote-unquote dime pieces, but then you start realizing if you watch their content enough, a lot of these dudes... They ain't pulling nobody who's legit into them. The weekend for the month, whatever. Price has been negotiated and set and play. You know? But in terms of folks who uh, may be with them in the long run, I'm not saying everybody, because I've seen legit relationships. And from being somebody who's been in enough legit relationships, I know the difference when I see the chemistry. I know the difference when, yeah, there's a huge language barrier, a huge cultural uh, difference and stuff, but there's a genuine love here. There's a genuine friendship here. You know, shout out to my man again. I'm gonna mention my bro, cause I love his channel. Uh, Zoom to Tyler, you know what I'm saying? Richie Mack is the real deal. That's real love. It, it's, L loves that man, you know what I'm saying? They, they got an interesting combination, but it's, you can feel, it's real. It's not just for the camera. It ain't just, yeah, they had a moments, I'm sure, like anybody, he said that. He's talking about some of that, but they in it for the win. They for real, for real. That's the, I love that. I love that. You know, I've watched this channel for years now and enjoyed seeing their relationship grow. So I know when I'm looking at the real deal. And I, I respect that and honor that when I see that. What I Like I say, but what I don't see sometimes is I see these other cats. And the difference is this, too. They don't be showing their women a lot of times. Them dudes will be talking all that stuff about the down. They'll show you, they'll flash you a quick picture. Or they'll be walking with her and show you, you know, the creep cam version, you know, you get the booty cheeks, you get the legs and the toes and all that kind of vibe, but you ain't about to get the face constantly. You might get a slight peripheral view glance or something, because maybe she done told him, I don't want to be on your channel like that. I don't mind helping you get your numbers. So yeah, put the camera on my booty. I don't care, baby, whatever. You know, add that to my bill. <laughs> add that to the bill. But don't be, you know, but don't be trying to make me, no, I don't, uh uh, -uh. Cause you just a customer and I got other customers and I don't want them too jealous of the fact they gonna see me on this video. It's deep out here with that stuff. So that part right there, that's another element of it. Dudes don't be out here fronting like, you got it like that when you start making your moves internationally when you know back home, you ain't, you ain't all that man. You know, drinking all that beer and all that liquor does do what it do to your body. You gonna get that pot belly. That's just the way metabolism works. Everything when it comes to your looks is work. Now, I made a conscious decision as an actor, even before I was an actor, I made a decision just being a kid looking at actors and people I admire and then coming up in comic book culture and everything. I had to learn over years and years and years that first of all, a lot of my perception of muscle was unrealistic. Most men who be that super diesel, like professional wrestler look or bodybuilder look none of that stuff is natural that ain't natural man you know it's impressive it's amazing to see like god dang look at that it's you know it's it's like seeing a mutated animal you know we are animals we're mammals but i'm saying if you see a mutated cow with a you know it's, it's, it's a you know, they'll tell you scientifically that's a mutation that's not normal it's amazing to see or something that's been bred to the point where there's a breed of cow or dog and that's why they be having medical issues. They're big, they're ridiculously strong, and they're this, that, and the other. That stuff ain't natural. So I, once I got to the point where I was okay with the fact, man, I'm gonna always be a slim. I was meant to be slim. I was meant to be slim. If I put on more muscle, I'm never, if I do it naturally, which I'm only gonna do it, and, and especially because of some things I understand now about health and supplements and all that stuff, I don't be taking no, I don't take no vitamins. I don't take no supplements. Did you hear what I just said? I ain't saying to anybody who needs them, who's been put on them by a doctor, to second guess that if that's working for you. But if you feel some kind of weird way every now and then, or you started having other problems after you started taking all that stuff and can't figure out why, this is on a tangent, but it's related because we're talking about what creates the looks that we sometimes think we want. 
let it go. Now, I can't tell, I didn't get specific because I ain't got about, it ain't about specifics. I don't play with them. I don't play with them. I don't need them. I don't want them. Nope. Mm -mm. Whatever I can't figure out from what I eat and what my exercise regimen is, I don't need it. Period. Not for me. I'm not trying to do it. If we can get away from so much stuff that's so, so unnatural and get back to what people really be looking like, <laughs> I think a lot of the stuff we even think is so important in beauty would, would be okay as we get older. We'd be like, man, hey, it's okay. We, yo, you get that age, you might have this. You might have that, you know, certain things that happen to the body naturally happen. That's for sure. You might be able to hang on to looking 30s like me, you know, <laughs> but with gray hair. No, but for real, like it's, it's a, this is a, well, this is freaking work, man. This is discipline. This is, and once you're in it, you like doing it because you see, man, the reward of me constantly staying on point, no matter who around me and saying, do something else. What that got to do with what I know I got to do for me? Not a damn thing. And like I say, let you go through, like I have go through something where you was in the hospital because of something that was, you thought it was healthy and it still wasn't working. Mm-hmm. You go through something like that. Can't nobody, can't nobody rock you. Can't nobody tempt you to do anything outside of what is your wheelhouse. You're going to stay on the, I promise you're going to stay on the track. So, same goes with these relationships. And I say that that's why we got to be realistic about it when we talk about this long-term stuff. Man, long-term is, is really, if you want it the way most men and women, or especially women, say they want it. And I say especially women because y'all make it so hard for men. I used to wonder, like, what is it really when I was young? I got older, I understand. But when I was young, I'd be like, why is it? Like, you go to a wedding and they had that part in American weddings. And most, not everybody, just, you know, that common tradition throwing that garter belt, which I didn't never like that thing no way because I thought, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna go up the side of the leg of my woman? Something that touched close to where, this is mine now. I done claimed everything about this lady. And I'm gonna take this item and throw it into a mob of dudes. I don't care if they my brother's cousins, who, a mob of dudes. And, they, and then they don't wanna get it. They are gonna dodge it. Somebody might catch it by mistake, but they all generally, dodge it because it's supposed to be this thing of if I get it, I'm next to get married. No one wants to get married. No one wants to be chained down. Ah, uh, you know, all of that. Right? So, like I always, I always jokingly said, and I couldn't do this when I got married, and I always laugh. I always say, yeah, I guess if I ever do get married again, I'm going to have a woman who, at least when I she probably won't, no woman would let me do this more than likely, but I want somebody who would at least laugh at the joke and, and love the joke. But I said, I ain't throwing nothing that's that close to my lady's woo woo wah wah. I said, I'll tell you what I can do to let them know what love is if you want to catch love, because that's what you're symbolically saying. You want to catch love? I'm going to take a cinder block and decorate that mofo. And you can you can hold it up and hand it to me. That'll be blessed by the woman. And then I'm going to throw it over my... <laughs> throw that bird. Whoever catch it. You know? Okay? Yeah, y'all, so... You know, it's, it's heavy lifting, and a lot of people ain't built for it. A lot of people say they want certain things, but when it all comes down, they're not ready. They're just not ready. They don't, they're not ready for the discipline. They're not ready for the sacrifice and the understanding that, yeah, you know, as a man, if a woman says, yo, I like when you wear this kind of fit, I know you're gonna change, but you can't ever get this big. You can't ever get this pant size, whatever. You can't be over there acting like that don't matter. And guess what, ladies? You say you like to cook, because that's rare, you know. But let's just be real about how they are now. Because there's some women who say they like to cook. I was gonna make two examples, here's one. If you do like to cook, but you like to cook really fattening food, like super rich, like like it's not, like you cook as good as any restaurant you would go out to, but just as bad as any restaurant you would go out to because you, you like all that pasta and, you got to have the Alfredo with the extra creamy and whipping cream. Every dish you make got whipping cream as an ingredient. And, and you got all kind of sugar and salt and stuff. Man, look, high diabetes and blood pressure issues in the black and everybody else's community these days in America is at an all time high. You got to discipline yourself. You got to listen to that voice in your head that says, got to do better, can't keep doing it like this. 
you can't keep getting the scares. You can't keep getting the moments where something is telling you to change and you just won't change nothing. And mind you, we all change and sometimes stuff still happens, but at least if you're making the effort, you one step ahead of the person who ain't giving a damn at all. And we play chess, not checkers here, you understand? So let me let me break this down, because I know somebody's saying, well, you must not have, I can't see why you got the voice, you must never went through nothing. People have accidents and you end up getting big because you can't work out and all, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. I know about all that, all that, okay? I'm not coming for people who have legitimate handicaps, legitimate mental health issues that get in the way. If you're the woman who can't cook, and he can't cook either, Lord forbid, both of y'all can't cook. Oh, you really done. And, 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 and ain't gonna cook healthy if either one of y'all, okay? So then you get a situation where you got the guy with the woman who, he got the money, she got some money too, but he, you know, you, you the big baller and she wanna see you throw your money around, so y'all always at the restaurants. You know restaurant food on purpose is full of all the sugar and all the salt because they don't they gonna go for the easy win. They like what if, I don't care what they say if we do this everybody says it tastes good so we're gonna give them excess of this stuff they know they ain't supposed to be eating and deal with the result period. We're just gonna let it be what it gonna be. They don't have to tolerate it. Take it for what it is and that'll be that. I don't want to hear it. That's, that's how the chefs are in the restaurants. So they give you the nonsense you want. And then you get the results in your hips, in your waistline, fellas, in your hips, ladies. And, and it's gonna cost your relationship, you know? Because if one person wants to do better and the other person don't give a damn, all right? Over time, that's gonna lead to resentment. I know why people like me are taking their time on considering another marriage and refuse to settle down unless they know people are gonna consider these things I'm talking about and be realistic about it. That's my advice. Let's see what y'all think in the comments. I appreciate y'all for watching. Again, I'm Joseph Farr Wheeler III, the artist, the founder, and the president of the Honest Con Foundation. And the views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of our sponsors, affiliates, and associates. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like the video. Thank you.